Hello and welcome to this new episode of Smarter Tech. I'm here with uh, Rudolf Zentinger. Is it, is it well pronounced? I, perfect. My... Perfect, Nicholas. Perfect. Okay, well, not so bad because, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not well versed. Where do you come from, uh, Rudolf? And let us know a little bit about your background so we can dive into the discussion around the water. Okay, well, let's do that. Uh, I'm now located in the, in the Netherlands. Okay. And, uh, by Amsterdam. And uh, my background is uh, that more than uh, 40 years ago, I started my uh, first IT company. And uh, more than 30 years ago, we started to introduce artificial intelligence in the world. So I was one of the first companies introducing that. Went to Silicon Valley over there. I worked very close with some of the big companies like IBM. Is it? And, and uh, many years later, I introduced fiber optics in the Netherlands as well. And uh, from that on, I worked with, uh, with light. And uh, I also was, was quite uh, interested in what can we do with light? And is light only the separate colors we see? And uh, purely by luck, uh, we came into contact with uh, Professor Pop in Germany, who is one of the uh, men in the world who work with biophotons and biophotonic equipments. And we took over the laboratory because we wanted to find out what's happening in modern nature. Because suddenly we saw all the troubles come popping up, allergies and all kinds of strange diseases, cancers. And then we did a lot of tests. And after one, two years, we found out that one of the most essential items that we constantly, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have noticed was water. And uh, then we uh, went uh, to uh, a lot of the scientists in the world and we asked them, can you tell us a little bit more about water because we saw some of those effects. And they said, well, we haven't got a clue, to be honest. It's a mystery. And from that moment on, we were uh, talking with all those scientists all over the world, from Japan, the US, and then many other areas. And then we became a water laboratory, and we did hundreds of tests with water. And then uh, we did we measured it with all kinds of equipment, like biophotons with light. And that is more than forty years ago, Nicola. And then finally, okay. we found out how how can we create water that has a certain stability in its structure? We we found out that water has a certain structure, and uh, that is how it all started. Okay, and that's uh, is that in Albert so. it's, it's, Albert it's, Fritz Pop, the scientist yep. that you mentioned. Okay, yes. and uh, can you let us know a little bit more about biophotons in water? What is measured? What kind of apparatus are scientists using to kind of quantify the energy in water? Because I think that for a lot of people listening, even those well-versed in, you know, the importance of filtering water, they don't initially think of water as something that would have a certain charge or energy to it. Yeah. yeah. First of all, you oh, cannot I measure biophotons in water. Okay. Uh, you can measure water with other equipment, like near infrared with, with light. There you can measure, and there you see waveforms. And out of the waveforms, you can see how water and the water bridges, that is the connection between the atoms, how they behave, and how they connect to each other. But it, with biophotons, you can measure the effect uh, on different types of water, in, for instance, uh, vegetables or okay. in soil. So then you move to biological systems and there you measure the biophotons. And then you can see the effect of, of what light is doing because what is biophoton measurements that are the waves and the, the, the effect that you can see in a biological system, how much light it is giving to a system and how the waveforms inform each other. So there is a language of light into a biological system. And that light is an alphabet. And then you can see exactly what does it do. And that is how we found out that when you look with different types of water, then you could see different effects in light. Gotcha. So, for example, on vegetables, how would you measure biophotonic emissions from vegetables? Is it a, a sort of GDV camera or Sputnik, which is another uh, technology yeah, yeah. developed by Dr. Kurotkov? No, no, no. Uh, Kurotkov is doing something else. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, what we do is you beam light through, for instance, a tomato, and then you can absorb the light, and then you can see how much light do I get back or how much light stays in the tomato. Okay. Yes. And then you can see the effect, and that 
at the end, you, you do the multiple tomatoes, hundreds or thousands of them, and then you put it in a database, and then you can see the waveforms. Okay. Because you, they're ongoing. And then you can see, hey, this wave is in harmony, and that wave is creating a problem. And what we did is that we didn't only look with biophotons, but we looked to ultraviolet, we looked to Rambam, we looked to how the uh, atoms were moving, we looked in the near infrared and the infrared, and that is what we combined, that became the complete database, and that is how we could see how water behaved. That was a mystery. Yeah, so so watering certain plants with certain types of water that have been uh, optimized or, or changed, you realize that's, in my, in my mind, that's kind of basic science that uh, many people maybe think has been done, but talk a little bit about the water science, because I don't know, you, you came to it um, with a, a, a background in IT, but I heard interviews with Dr. Gerald Polak, for example, who is a very uh, popular, let's say, in the online space because he's been a voice for water research. And he, he talked on several podcasts how water research has been uh, almost completely defunded. And now it's almost only independent scientists with philanthropic efforts to fund them. So when you got into water research, did you face any... Uh, did you feel like the the topic ha was untouchable or uh, ridiculed even in the science scientific world or uh it was completely unknown and Gerald Pollack is one of those pioneers what he's is. doing it is a great job yes and nowadays there is there is an, an whole team of scientists all over the world most of them are connected to universities and his work is very profound but all those universities, and, and especially also in France, whereby uh, the Nobel Prize winner uh, also moved from looking to viruses to water, Luc Montagnier, yeah. and many others, and, and many scientists in Russia as well, they found out that water is able to receive electromagnetic waves, and then it has a different effect. Now, for a lot of people, electromagnetic waves, they say, oh my God, what is that? But it's very simple. Electromagnetic waves is, for instance, the sun and the moon. Yes. But a lot of people haven't got a clue that our whole life is based upon electromagnetic waves. The fact that you and I speak with each other is made possible by electromagnetic waves in our body as well. Yes, yes. Each cell cannot respond without that. So you start to understand those electromagnetic waves, they become a language. And that is something we yeah, we started with it maybe 10, 20 years ago. But I can tell you one thing, this is going to be one of the major issues in biology, biology in the coming years. Because we can see already that diseases pop up if there is something wrong into the electromagnetic field. Yeah, and... and, and... Let's define a little bit more water structure or words like coherent water. Uh, yep. I, I heard about water clusters and how the water is arranged on an atomic level. And then I heard of all sorts of measurements that can be done on water. You mentioned infrared, how the how certain wavelengths will penetrate water and um, and kind of change angles. So the refractory angle, I think, on water. So that's another thing that can me be measured. It's it's all very elusive to me. So how do you define it? And uh, do we have examples of, let's say, natural water versus tap water where we can see the difference in those characteristics? Yes, especially oh, when you go to the near yeah. infrared, where you can see a waveform. And then there's waveforms you can see is water connected, the atoms, how is the structure. So you have to, let's make it very simple, otherwise a lot of people won't understand it. Yeah. You have the atoms and they can make a kind of crystal form. Yes, they are connected to each other. We call this connection that is done by what we call a water bridge. Okay. And you have the connection between the atoms. If they create a kind of a cluster, a kind of crystalline form, then it can carry information from outside. And that is calculated many years ago already by physicists. And nowadays, there is a lot of 
lot of tests are done in many universities to see, is water really able to carry information? And the answer is yes, it can. And that is done in the way it can cluster itself in crystalline forms. And you can measure that with certain uh, areas in the near infrared. Mm-hmm. Then you can see what it's doing. Mm-hmm. And you can also see that certain waters are completely in chaos. Then it cannot make clusters. Then it cannot carry this information. So it's, it's look to it like, like a train. You have a wagon, and in those wagons you can put a lot of people in, and, 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 and luggage, and all the things. That is the information. But if the train itself doesn't have that power, then the number of people in the train are limited. And that is more or less the difference. But what we call coherent water is that it has the ability to carry a lot of information and keep it. Because you drink water, like what you just did, and then you bring information into your body, and then it must keep that information and bring it to your cells and take it out of your cells. But if the water cannot do that, then first of all, you need much more water. But also, your body doesn't function 100%. Because almost everything in your body, every biological effect of your body, has to do with water. A lot of people don't understand that 99% of their molecules in their body are water molecules. Yeah. So you are water, more or less. So we can only imagine. I I don't know how, you know, demonstrated drinking coherent water has been in the medical. I think that's still an area of controversy, but possibly because the controversy around water research, the scandal around Luke Montagnier, and I won't get into that, but I I'll link to a podcast that. Uh, Gerald Polak has done with Dave Asprey years ago. It, it it reads like a spy novel almost, you know, in scientific accusations of fraud, and then it was cleared, but um, Montagnier eventually passed, and there was uh, it was actually J- uh, Jacques Beneviste, another French, um, uh, mm-hmm. very acclaimed scientist that was accused of fraud. Eventually, they couldn't they they claimed that it could they couldn't re- reproduce, but Gerald Polak said to um, as as you alluded to. In water research and their uh, multiple conferences they have around the world, it is a known fact, just like, you know, a known fact that is just simple, that water has memory. So for water researchers, if you ask them, it's like, oh, yeah, this has been proven decades ago. If you ask what people on the Internet think of it or mainstream scientists that don't know water research, they would say, oh, no, this idea is crazy. So do you have any idea of whether we're actually progressing towards an understanding of what are the biological effects of drinking coherent water versus drinking tap water like the average population is doing? That is a very, very important question that you raised now. The only way you can prove it is doing multiple tests on people. And that is yeah. exactly that is exactly what we do. We do it not only on people, we do it with animals, and we do it in plants and on soil all over the world. And then we measure all the effects, and we do all those measurements with external universities, all of them, completely neutral. And then we publish it. And the publications are increasing, increasing, increasing. And then you can see that, yes, water has memory. And water really makes a difference. But it is not known in the medical world yet. But I can tell you it will come. It will definitely come. I think it's going to make um, a big step in the global understanding in biology. I think the the water aspect is missing. That's something Dr. Cowan has, has also mentioned. Uh, he was also on my uh, EMF Hazard Summit in 2023. Uh, he, he talked about his views on what is a cell, for example, is there is there a cell membrane? It's it's wild when it gets into redefining our understanding of biology because since we cannot see cells or even mitochondria, all we have is the the limitations of the tools we use to view biology. So in his in his mind, biology is completely different than textbooks, and and for sure the the role of water is uh, has been almost 
removed from the equation when you're looking at how biological systems function, at least the human body. Um, so it would be fascinating to see how it can evolve our understanding of health or disease. Um, that's just, yeah, it's just a, an overall commentary. But I want to dive into something you said with the interview of Dr. Cowan. And I'll take note because I know some people will want to listen to this one. Uh, you said that you realized that using a Wi-Fi router, so again, electromagnetic energies, you talked about the sun impacting water. Now we're talking about man-made energies in the form of a Wi-Fi router, for example. For all I know, it could be a cell phone. And you said that this destroys water structure. Uh, yep. Can you elaborate on this, what you've seen with uh, your equipment, and, and how long does it take for that effect to take place? Um the effect can take place depending upon where you put the water, but the effect is taking place already within one or two minutes. That's incredible. Yeah. And it depends also on the wavelength that the router has. So this, each, each wavelength has a different effect. And uh, then due to the fact that water has memory, it remains in that water for a long, long time. When you say it remains, how can it be measured in that water? Well, this can be measured with the near infrared and the waveforms. And then what we did also is that we gave that water to plants and then we looked to the energy level of plants. Yeah. And that was sometimes <laughs> shocking. Because plants respond immediately to the environment. Plants are very sensitive for electromagnetic waves, by the way. That is why some plants use music, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that, that is that is really proven that if you give a plant water that has been under the influence of an electromagnetic wave, we can measure the effect on the energy level and it in certain cases it went almost down to zero percent. So the water was draining the energy in a sense, almost a negative gain. Uh it's and and it, it it's just I had a thought while we were talking, sorry to interrupt, but there, I already saw research, and that's controversy dating back from uh, probably the 1950s when the microwave oven was introduced. But microwaving water and then feeding it to rats or plants, there's plenty of, I would say, controversial. That word is almost uh, almost meaningless these days. But I would say in the mainstream, there's still controversy whether you know uh, using a microwave oven and eating the food might be detrimental. But I saw rats around... Uh, I, I saw studies around rats that are fed uh, or, or that drink microwaved water uh, or microwave treated water, and the oxidative stress goes up, for example, or liver enzymes, are markers of of uh, liver stress. Um, it's not surprising to me that the same could ap apply to a Wi-Fi router. Uh, it's not a thousand watts like your microwave oven. It might be one watt or whatever these things emit these days, a few watts at, at the most, but it doesn't mean that, you know, we don't know if that's sufficient to create an effect. And clearly your experiments show that, yes, it is sufficient within one or two minutes, you're essentially drinking microwaved water. So it just builds on all the past research that was around this topic in my mind. Well, I'm very honest to you. Uh, I, I'm quite familiar with the telecom co companies and, uh, I worked for them as well. And I know what type of test they did. Uh, but what they say is that when you have, for instance, a mobile phone, uh, then it cannot harm you because the radiation cannot come through the body and it can only be a little bit warm around your ear and that has no effect. Yep. This is completely nonsense. <laughs> a, whole body, a whole body is an, ele an electromagnetic system. And no matter how big or small it is, if you beam with a router 7 times 24 a certain frequency, then the frequency has an effect because you are water. Yeah, exactly. And that's an angle that the industry will completely, they won't get into it because, of course, it would completely change their admittance of what is safe and what is not. Uh, and that's the same thing for uh, not not just the the water changes, but oxidative stress, or if we used other markers to determine what is safe, what is unsafe, 
uh, I'll tell you right now, everything is unsafe by default because we are exposed. Everything is unsafe. And that's the thing. That's really what you know, scientists have been saying for decades is, well, we don't know what the safe level is of, of cell phone exposure. All we know is everything we're exposed to is inherently unsafe. And that's just how it is. So we're, we're kind of left to uh, doing as much as we can to uh, avoid exposure. But there are also solutions. And I want to dive into this. There are also solutions, and, and you're you're behind a company called Analemma. I don't know if you're associated with other products or other companies, and you tell me, but uh, a solution that can help bring back that coherence to water. And I think that's very important. I, I came across so many different solutions that claim to structure water and um, make water coherent, vortexing, crystals, different systems. Your approach is a bit different. It's a wand that I've been using, and I know you have a, a whole home si- uh, system as well. Uh, how does it work, and how on earth is it possible to bring back structure to water? Because that's still a mystery to me. Okay. A lot of questions, and I yeah. uh, try. <laughs> okay, first of all, all the tests that we did in a laboratory was always based on 3 and 4G. So every water we test, and yes, Vortex is working. Yes, crystals work. All of them work, but they work, first of all, in a very limited time frame, sometimes even just a few seconds. Okay. And it, and it doesn't create a coherent state that can be, that can protect you against 3 and 4G for a longer time. So the structure is not strong enough. It doesn't remain there. So for us, all the tests that, that we have done over the last few years is based on our waters that is already three to six months old, always. When we send water to a laboratory, we always give it old water that has okay. a structure. And then we say, okay, then the structure must remain there. And what we have found is that certain structures have a certain resistance against these radiations. They can they they are really under the impact. They really get a hit, but they have the ability to come back. Yep. Yes. And for uh, for us this was really a surprise to see that water has a certain knowledge that knows exactly how the structure when the structure is formed and it takes a year to form it. If the structure is formed in a certain way, then it can protect itself to certain harmful wavelengths. And one of those wavelengths is 4 and 5G. Although we also have to admit that with the number of 4 and 5G satellites and, and mobile phones, and routers, then you really have a problem because we are talking nowadays already about hundreds of millions of routers all over the world. Yeah. We are also going to introduce 100,000 satellites that being 5G. And, uh, Nicholas, that is one of our biggest concerns at the moment because we did a lot of testing water of especially the last few months again. And then we found that the biological systems in water, for instance, in the oceans or in rivers, then it has a direct effect upon the biological plants, etc. So those plants that give oxygen, if they get a hit, then you get a serious problem in our climate. Mm-hmm. Very serious. That is why this is so important that we really have to understand water in those wavelengths. And that is why I tell you, this will become a big issue in the coming years. Because the tests have proven now that many of the harmful bacteria that, that we all have around us they are always there in a certain harmony. But we take out the harmony. So we take out the balance, and that is what we see. So it really affects us. And for us, it was a test. Can we create a certain stability in those crystalline forms that can really protect yourself against those waveforms? And, well, till now, we do it with a lot of success. So how does it work, the transfer of information between yep. the water and the wand? Because explain what the wand is and how is it possible to I, not have the water 
touch another water and still have a transfer. It's almost, it kind of sounds magical, almost. Yeah, it, it, it sounds magical. It, it, it is pure science. We do a lot of tests now in the laboratory over the world. You have to understand the wand is, is, is uh, just a few inches long. And in the wand, you have what we called the original water, modern water. <laughs> that is, that water is made and it takes a year to make it in such a way that it can keep its crystalline form and protect you against these uh, radiations. The wand is uh, surrounded and it looks like glass, but it ain't glass. And in this system, if you, uh, because the, the water water has a high level of frequency. And water wants to move that co to that coherent state. And it can copy itself in a glass of water to that state whereby it remains coherent. So if you have a wand and the inside of the wand has a certain, yeah, call it a kind of electricity. It's no electricity, by the way, but it is water, but it has a high potential. One, the other water around it wants to have the same potential. And this is one of those mysteries that, that is known now in science, but we don't have the formula yet, but it works that way. But we still also don't have a formula how it is possible that ice is there. Because normally when water is getting colder and you have ice, it should go down. But in this case, it goes up. It can stand yeah. on. We don't yeah. have the formula there, but we see it works. The same as with this. Yeah. It work, and it works constantly. So what we do is that all the tests are done with a wand, and then we first use it in other water, and that water is used in laboratories. Gotcha. So when so when you do the tests around an alema, you you made the water coherent using the analemma and then you feed it to test subjects, for example, or plants. That's it. That's it. Plants, yeah. animals, humans. Evidence is uh, to talk about some of the human tests. Uh, sure. we, we, we gave uh, mm -hmm. people for three mm -hmm. months this water, two glasses a day. And what we found out is that uh, after those three months, we saw an increase in the ATP. ATP has a relationship with the energy uh -huh. into your body. And there is also some discussion about that in, in the world of science, but ATP has an effect into the body that has to do with energy. Uh, we have seen that the, the number of positive bacteria into your intestine, and that is one of the most critical areas into your body because all your resistance starts there, uh -huh. is increasing in power. All those things take place. And that, that is not a real surprise for us because water has an effect on everything. Yeah, so that's the powerful. Wand, so so the, the wand that you have and that you use, you drink two glasses a day and step by step you are building up a certain resistance against this radiation. Depending upon where you live. If you're going to live uh, next door to a 5G antenna, well, you have to drink a little bit more uh, but uh, you can you, you understand that yeah well for sure so it brings do we know well I guess we know by the human studies that there is a biological effect there's always the big question of whether drinking coherent water will make the water in our bodies coherent itself but it, I, I, I don't know I guess these are almost technical questions that are secondary and that are just scientific curiosity at this point because if you feed it to plants and the plants thrive if you feed it to rats and they thrive if you feed it to humans and they thrive do we need to understand the full mechanisms i don't know but it shows that there's something and that biology responds in a positive way to coherent water which is again is it that surprising no it's well, just you know you give it natural water and the human being or plant or animal loves it. It's kind of logical, you know? Also, I fully agree with you. A lot of people suddenly start to, to raise questions about water, how is it working? But a lot of people take just like that. They take a medicine from the pharmacy or vaccination and they don't wonder what's in it. <laughs> That's true. That's true. People do that, yeah. Then suddenly it's okay. 
And when you talk about water and you you, you can show the attraction, then they start to raise these questions. It's it's it's, uh, it's a strange world in that respect. That's true, but um, I'm gonna link also to uh, Analemma, uh, the Analemma website, also with the research. I love that uh, you are doing uh, larger and larger trials, which is always something I look at for companies that are expanding. Are they spending uh, part or of their earnings to better and further the science? Some companies are clearly not interested in bettering the science. They're more interested in, you know, bettering their marketing. And that's okay. But at the same time, I think a, an ethical responsibility for companies, especially that are de developing um, products that touch frontier science, is to improve that science. And I think that you guys are doing a great job. And I saw, you know, more, more in depth uh, in the discussion with Dr. Cowan that for him it was important to have the science. But in the end, you know what he told me? Uh, when I, I asked Dr. Cowan, well, how do you know personally that drinking coherent water is important? Or did you see a difference? And he said, well, you know what I do? I'm a scientist at heart. So I take that water, I structure it, or I make it coherent using an alema or other techniques also. And then I water my plants and I look at the plants and the plants are better than the other plants. And that's it. That's all the proof I need. So for him, he's an absorber. In the end, it's true that sometimes we've lost that that common sense, that experiment from, you know, those uh, uh, primary grade students that are watering plants with certain types of water. And there's even uh, these things circulating on the Internet where those same students have tried a Wi-Fi router near near these sprouts and then no Wi-Fi router. And they see the sprouts that are so small near the router because obviously it changes water structure, create, creates oxidative damage and whatnot. And, and then people in the comments are like, no, that's impossible, that's pre preposterous. Well, look at the studies around plants and man-made radiation. It's all there. The plants <laughs> are having a hard time when they're near the sources. And sometimes it can be observed also with trees that are near cell phone masts, for example. So uh, I'm not surprised. I'm, this is fascinating. And what I like, I must say, about Analemma is that you purchase it once and you hope not to drop it or else you, you got to buy a second one. But, you know, I, I've been taking care of it. Uh, I, I traveled all around the world last year. I was able to use it for the last 18 months. And you buy it once. And that's a thing that... I don't like from certain companies that sell special water, whether it's, um, you know, hydrogen rich water and this and that. It's one of the problem. It's not against the company. It's just the nature of the product. You got to buy that special water again and again and again. So over a year, and most people cannot afford these types of special water. Uh, but with Analemma, well, you take up, of course, I recommend still filtering water, having, you know, not not using tap water. That's something I've been advocating for for years. But then you're able to just use the wand. And uh, how much time should you stir the the wand in, in a glass of water, for example? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. So 20 seconds later, you have the water. So it's not it's not complicated. It doesn't, you know, it's not using, okay, Nick is it's telling you to spend 20 minutes in a sauna and do exercise and this. Like sometimes it gets very complicated. Even I get lost in my own own recommendations and I say, oh my God, it's so difficult. It's so long. But it's a one-time purchase, one-time fee. You buy it uh, and we do have a coupon code also EMF guy 10 for 10% 10 off. It's going to be also in the show notes. But wow. I I believe in the product. I think it's it's a good solution, especially since most solutions I came across before that were you know, a thing where you have to pour your water, it spills all over the place, or more complicated solutions like a an electronic base that uses magnetism. But a lot of them were in the hundreds of dollars also, which is always a big concern for me. I want to find as affordable products as possible for people that are uh, uh, following my work. So I think it's well-priced uh, and then you have to purchase it once. So I'm a big believer. I want to Thank you for your work because uh, I think it's it's really different from most products I've seen across the years, and then the credibility that you bring to it uh, is quite extraordinary with the with the studies. Um, maybe as we 
depart from the discussion, what studies are you currently doing or maybe plan on doing in the future? Because I know you're always looking at new angles. And uh, are you also collaborating with certain water scientists on oh, yeah. you know, improving uh, the science? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we are connected to the International Water Institute, WETSIS, which is uh, one of the most famous universities in Europe, uh, completely based upon water. And uh, we have done a very important study with them with 5G. And uh, we tested our water there as well. And uh, then uh, what we are going to do is that we're going to test uh, more and more uh, on water because this might have an effect even on our, uh, our whole climate system. Okay. If wow. we are going to increase our... If we're going to change the electromagnetic fields around us, and the clouds are, are water, and everything is water, or the whole atmosphere is water, and it responds to that, then you can get a serious issue. So that is why we really speed up the science, <laughs> and we do it with a very open mind. We do it all over the world. So the test that we do is now on uh, mitochondria, ATP again, and upon the effect on ocean water as well. That's very, very important. I'm glad that you're focusing on that. I'm uh, I'm also surprised, pleasantly surprised, because it's an issue that not a lot of people are talking about. There's maybe Arthur Furstenberg uh, with his book, The Invisible Rainbow, uh, talked about the potential the, the potential disaster that we might be creating on basically you put satellites around the earth and you beam those waves and scientists are only thinking or a lot of people including myself sometimes I'm only thinking about humans oh cancers and humans are going to have depression or brain fog but what about the global effects and just the effect on the ionosphere for example or even are we impacting different aspects of earth magnetism for example so these are questions we're talking about uh worldwide global impact on the quality of life on earth so it's a little bit more important than increasing cancer risk you know yeah and that's just ironic right there it's it's because crazy important I'm very glad that you bring this up because this is a serious topic i can tell you one thing this whole world is surrounded by electromagnetic fields that are in harmony with the sun and the moon and all those planets around us. They create, they create it all. We haven't got a clue what intelligence there is into these electromagnetic fields. It's a different subject. I can tell you a lot about it, but there is an intelligence in it that controls our whole biological system as well. We are disturbing that system. And that system is beaming direct also to water so uh, this goes too deep for this interview, but it is really having a very serious effect. So what you just mentioned is absolutely true, and that is why we want to do the research in that area. The, this is brilliant, and I'm I I will spend more time looking into this particular issue because I think if we can um, basically bring the burden of proof or make the proof so overwhelming that there is an effect on the planet on an electromagnetic standpoint, we are affecting natural systems, then maybe, maybe, let's hope that the environmentalists can finally jump on board with the fight against electropollution, which is still, to this day, there's barely any major environmental, environmentally focused organizations such as Greenpeace. These guys are not in it. They're not on board with the idea that electropollution is a big threat to nature, no matter how many scientific reviews have been published. And there might be questions of conflicts of interest or um, corporate influence, but I think that a lot of them are unsure if the topic is credible or not, and they're kind of waiting on I don't know what until they finally say, guys, this is we have to include that as a pollutant so that we start figuring out what we're doing to ecosystems. But, yeah, I hope they do that before it's too late. Uh, Nicholas, that is why we want to do this research and end it within a year. And uh, what I said, it goes too deep for this interview, but I can tell you a lot about it. And this is really one of the key topics. And uh, organizations that work in the environment, they should know about it. It's very critical. 
I agree a hundred percent. So th- thank you so much for your time, and I'll yeah. I'll stay you know uh, in in touch about these studies that you're doing. And uh, if you have any findings, please uh, make sure to share them with me. I'll be looking at your newsletter and uh, hope to see if there's there's something that comes from that research. And also we'll share that in my circles as well, because I think it's so important that maybe that's an angle that we'll finally get uh, those environmentalists uh, on board. As far as your website, Analemma, so A N A. L E M M A dash water dot com and uh that's EMF guy ten for ten percent off. So thank you for uh, the discount. I do appreciate it. And of course, uh, as always, if you purchase something from my interviews, my products, my podcast, uh there's a, also a small compensation that goes to my company. It helps me as a a hundred percent self financed educator, journalist. I'm trying to do uh, my best and bring you this information. And I think that uh, today hopefully was uh, very hope, uh, very helpful to everyone. So thank you so much, uh, Rudolf. It was uh, enlightening. And I really like the level of depth that you have and the fact that you have further science. So I, it's, I, I'm really feeling a good energy from your company and your work. And I hope that we can speak again soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.